there's traffic lights. Have you ever wondered who controls these lights and if there really is a plan? Well, I'm going to find out. Let's go! Traffic lights. They're everywhere. Yeah, sure, they keep us from running into each other, but sometimes it seems like they're there just to frustrate us. If you get one of these things down on the ground, you'll quickly notice that they're a lot bigger than you think. And the configuration is also standardized. It's always red on top and green on the bottom. Or if they're horizontal, it's always red on the left and green on the right. Why? So if you're colorblind, you still know when to stop and when to go. You'll also notice that there's always two sets of lights at every intersection. It's a safety feature. If one of the bulbs burns out, there's always a backup. So who controls these lights? Well, it's a combination of the city, a computer, and believe it or not, you. This is the Traffic Signal Control Center for the city of Mississauga. On this map, they can monitor the traffic lights at every intersection in the city. Now, here at the center, they control two things. The cycle length, meaning the time it takes for a signal to go from green to yellow to red and back to green again. And they can control when that cycle starts in relation to all the other lights around it. Sounds a bit like synchronization to me. But anyhow, the rest of the control happens right here at the intersection. Each intersection has one of these, a computer that times all the lights. What's surprising is the timings aren't constant. They change with the time of day. For example, during the morning rush hour, this street is full of commuters traveling into the city from the suburbs. Now to help move the traffic along, the green lights on this street are longer during rush hour than during the rest of the day. Now that's great for commuters, but if you happen to be traveling in the opposite direction, you're going to hit a lot more red lights because you're not traveling in the preferred direction. Now I said that you have some control over the traffic lights too. How's that? Well, a lot of intersections have sensors buried underneath the pavement. Contrary to what some people think, these sensors are not triggered by weight. They're called induction loops, which is just a fancy name for a metal detector. At this intersection, you can see the outline of the loop right here. Now, when you drive through the loop, the metal in your car triggers the sensor and tells the computer, you're waiting. Some intersections have sensors in the left turn lane. If the sensor detects cars in the lane, the drivers get a left turn arrow. If there's no cars turning left, then there's no arrow. Some traffic lights rely entirely on sensors. Here we have a quiet street joining up with a busy street. And that light behind me will never turn green unless a car comes along and triggers the sensor in the pavement. So we've got computers and we've got induction loops. But what about the lights? Are they synchronized or not? Well, the answer is sort of. You see, traffic lights are all about making compromises. If you want to synchronize the traffic in one direction, then someone else is going to have to pay. Let me show you what I mean. The easiest lights to synchronize are on one-way streets. Since the traffic is all going in the same direction, the distances between the lights are the same for everyone. But the drivers who pay are those waiting to cross the one-way street. If the street has two-way traffic, it gets a little more complicated. Since the distances between intersections are different, you can't synchronize the lights in both directions. And if you choose one direction, then the cars traveling in the opposite direction lose out. Now introduce some major roads going north-south. You can see how impossible it would be to synchronize the lights for all the drivers. There's just too many variables. So back at the control center, they make compromises. First they decide which traffic flow they want to favor at different times of the day. And then they use computer models to find the best compromise for moving the high priority traffic without causing unreasonable delay for the other drivers. 
So the next time you run into several red lights in a row, you can bet that you're not part of the traffic flow that the system is trying to assist. It's a simple case of you traveling in the wrong direction at the wrong time. But you know, the system is not completely democratic. Some vehicles do have an advantage. Here's the ultimate example of synchronization, the Mississauga fire truck. See that? It's a strobe light that flashes as the truck approaches an intersection. The light is picked up by a sensor mounted on top of the traffic signals. And if the signal is green, it will stay green until the truck passes through the intersection. So why just fire trucks? Why not ambulances and police cars? Well, because of its size, the fire truck isn't as maneuverable in traffic as police cars and ambulances. And once they get up to speed, it's difficult for them to stop in a hurry. So the light is a safety feature, and it helps them to get to the fire a little faster. Unfortunately, we can't all drive fire trucks. But you know, when the traffic lights just aren't working out in your favor, it does help to have friends in high places. Traffic control center. Hi, Javid. Yeah, listen, it's Chris Robinson here. Uh, I'm stuck at a red light here at uh, Eglinton and Burnhamthorpe. Uh, you think you can help me out? Sure, I think you can help you out. 